Welcome to His House of Learning, podcast number five. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Today's topic, ecumenical professional development, training in worldly wisdom. The focus passage of this talk is going to be Proverbs 2, 1 through 22. And it's going to be supplementary to the long talk I did on Flourishing Part 3 in regards to, well, Baylor University, Grand Canyon University, amongst others, involved, engaged with the non-believing world in the flourishing psychological paradigm. I find that I did not include enough information particularly parties involved, to really have the church have an understanding of just how pervasive this is. And really the the goal is that with this awareness comes a greater sense of discernment. And that discernment requires a knowledge of the scriptures, prayer between you and the Lord, as well as fellowshipping those like-minded in the body of Christ encouraging one another to live the life that the Lord gives us. Psalm 23 is among my favorites. In fact, it was uh, something I had to memorize back when I was in elementary school, homeschooled by my mother. And I hate the uh, shortening of the third verse, which is only the first part which is, he restoreth my soul. And that's supposed to be used as an inspirational quote. But then there's a colon, or comma, depending on your translation. He restoreth my soul. And how does he do that? He leads me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That is a part of the the wisdom literature of Scripture. How does he restore our souls? He leads us on paths of righteousness, on living rightly according to his will, for his sake. The Lord's will is our good, not the common good, not social good, not any lesser fabricated good, but indeed the goodness that is our God Almighty. Our opening, pass, opening passage is going to be verses 1 through 5, in which says, and please make sure that you have a Bible on you and read along with me. Read afterwards. Study, study, people. In fact, <laughs> I'll, let this, I'll let this chapter speak for itself. I won't say anything more about learning. This, this, this will do it all. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, this is wisdom speaking, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding and hide thy commandments with thee. So receive them and hide them, keep them, hold on to them, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. So you desire to understand the things which the Lord is revealing to you Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifteth up thy voice for understanding. This is a desire. This is a want, if not a need. What do you want? What do you desire? What do you feel like you need day to day? My dear brother, sister, in the Lord. If thou seekest her as silver, that's wisdom, and searches for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You'll understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you'll find the knowledge of God. You'll actually know who God is. So much confusion amongst the world, and we're going to be getting to that pretty soon. Ecumenical PD, short for Professional Development. Let us bring man's wisdom. It all starts off with the church, and then it broadens to include include those outside 
particularly in this case, the Roman Catholic Church, and into broader circles, also encapsulates that of the, of the Mormons, if not the Jehovah's Witnesses, and many more. And it goes beyond that, that we'll see. So once again, Eastern mysticism, New Age, Islam, shoot, even, even the utters agnosticism, atheism, and all different forms of theism or skepticism of sorts. Just the universal Unitarianism, like just utter confusion, a flattening, the lowest common denominator that is what we call the common good. And that's what men strive for. Training in worldly wisdom. And we say, we don't know who God is. Well, did you seek after him? Did you cry out for understanding, for wisdom, for, for, for knowledge? Did you realize that, that in doing so, you will understand the fear of the Lord, not the fear of man, not the fear of death, not the fear of what will happen to you on this side of heaven, but the fear of the Lord. And find knowledge of God. You'll know who God is. And you'll recognize the, the, the Good Shepherd. Psalm 23. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's right. Correction and guidance. The harshness and gentleness of Jesus Christ. They comfort us. But that is if you fear the Lord and you know who he is then such will be the case. And this is a reference to Matthew chapter 13, 44 through 46. You have the words of Christ. He tells a number of parables, but this all goes back to wisdom literature. Christ is the law. Christ is the word. From Genesis to Revelation, it is all relevant. Matthew 13, starting with verse 44 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy there goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field, and that's the thing, we will, we will acquire we will acquire that treasure and we will sell, we will, we will deny ourselves of everything that we possess to understand the fear of the Lord and to know Him. And in doing so, we know what? The way, the truth, and the life. 45, 46, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And but remember, this is pearls is in reference to something that is priceless. You can you can you can gift a pearl to a king and that will be sufficient. Just a pearl. So we're talking about something so don't think at all this is this is from back in the day. No no. The idea is this is something so precious, so valuable, that you can offer it to a monarch, offer it to an emperor, and that will be a sufficient gift. who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it that's how precious the word the knowledge knowing who the Lord is that's how precious it is like you give everything else away you're ready to deny yourself as Christ said pick up your cross and follow him because you fear him because you know him and thus you love him that cross, that correction, that guidance comforts you. It comforts me every day. Everlasting unto everlasting. Let's turn our attention over to, once again, being an Arizona resident, I'm going to have to keep harping on Grand Canyon U University. You can actually find this information on Grand Canyon University News. I'll be so all of this online, readily available. A few keyword searches, a few clicks, it's there. There are no secrets. But 
What's interesting is the fact that people attend these things, especially those um, within the, the, the church, and they glean this wisdom, this worldly tripe, this imitation meat of man. And, and encouraged by by those who drink milk or <laughs> or drink or don't even or even or even the or don't even drink as such amongst the lukewarm and amongst the apostate perhaps even be you know behests of our so-called academic and spiritual brethren allies the Roman Catholic Church I'm not targeting Roman Catholics individually but I will have no love, I will have no appreciation, I will have no allegiance, no ties, no association with the papacy. And thus I will be cautious and wary of all those who bear the mark of Rome, as I should be wary of all those who claim to be a follower of Christ. I'll be sure to discern them by their fruits, as they should with me. As they should with me. GCU, now it's on his news, and remember, you have the you have the Canyon Center for Character Education this previous year, and they will be having it again, and for as long as they so deem. This previous year, they, there's a report on a three-day Wisdom for Good conference, led by two men, Bernard Franklin and Tony Clemmer. And where is this located? Not in Arizona, mind you. It's actually in Mount St. Mary's Uni University in Maryland, of all places. Bernard Franklin was at the time the Vice President of Student Life. And Tony Clem Clemmer is the founder of Wisdom for Good. A little bit of background on both men. Bernard Franklin is also a member of Harvard Advanced Leadership Initiative Likewise, likewise, a secular humanist, universalist, adult education program for for uh, for uh, for you know professionals across the fields. And mind you, though, mind you, he also served in organizations such as he was the vice president for the National Center for Fathering. So he was actually, so so he he was actually and has been still advocating against fatherlessness, particularly in the black families, or lack of thereof, <laughs> or lack thereof of black families. Bernard Franklin is of African heritage. More on more on you know, more on Franklin. So bear in mind. Uh, with that said. He is quite the combination, when you look into his background, he's quite the combination of both left-wing and right-wing politics, although overall leaning conservative. Overall. That's the key word. Although he's done quite a bit of work with Democrats and, and uh, Republicans, more so Democrats. But really, when you look into him, generally speaking, he leans right. So once again, we're talking about example of what's really behind the scenes, apart from the professional wrestling antics, you know, all the showmanship and drama that is in that is in our left wing, right wing paradigm for the exoteric, you know, for for the public at large. But really, when it comes to down to the operations, the day to day activities of our politicians, of our NGOs. Of our nonprofits, of our private businessmen, it is actually a, a syncretism of the two. It's all said and done. So, with that said, it takes a lot. You have to be much more careful in who and what you're dealing with because even though it appears to be holy, to be righteous, it may or may be antichrist. For example, Mr. Franklin is known. You can actually check on the. Uh, oh, oh, and by the way, before I read this, 
Oh yeah. So I already mentioned that. That's right, Harvard. So bear in mind, as a reminder, Harvard partnered to who? Baylor University when it came to the flourishing study started back in 2021. So Harvard again here, partnering with, indirectly with GCU. But it won't be the last time with anybody for that matter. And there's also, also Ms. Frankel is known, f known for pursuing personal transformation, the unfolding of the true self associated with a journey of awakening. The man utilizes throughout his, the last 20 th years of his activities, psychology and, and a neuroscience. Keep in mind, this is keep in mind. This is this is no mere mere lowbrow social activist. This is a man of conviction, philosophy, of unsound theology, and he has goals. He has directives. You could say that this is a man who truly believes that he is serving God. All right, so now we're going to turn our attention over to to the uh, you know before we uh, we're going to you know before we go into the wisdom for good itself, let's go over to Mount Saint Mary's U University. For it, it could be simply assumed, well, they're just the facility, they're just the uh, location. They have no direct or indirect notable influence whatsoever. Well, you'll be in, you know, incorrect. So, on their website, St. Mary's U University website, under Catholic Identity, it states, Mount St. Mary's U University is a proudly plural pluralistic university, a community of friendship in pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty. Pluralistic university, community of friendship, pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty. That's the opening statement to their Catholic identity. Under liberal arts, quote, the idea of a university grew from the conviction that one is enriched by joining a, a community of inquiry constituted by different approaches to truth, different approaches to truth, seeking together for a unified vision of life. So that is Mount St. Mary's, and that, and Bernard Franklin was former vice president of student life of Mount St. Mary's, and he was one of the one of the <laughs> presiding speakers of the Wisdom for, for for Good conference held by GCU on their campus, and this featured over and this featured over twenty faculty. 20 faculty across disciplines, including online faculty that reach the vast majority of the student body. All right, let's turn our attention over to Tony Clemmer. Background on him. He's got, and, he's, and it's uh, quite the uh, resume, but to shorten it, he's from Yale University School of Management. University School of Management, excuse me, and that's the thing, he helped start multiple high-tech companies and distribution centers within the United States as well as Asia, I think, I believe also it's assistant in Africa as well, along with promoting multiple organization and centers for equity. Bear in mind that's not in the financial sense, but more in the uh, DIE sense. So, overall, it appears outwardly right wing. You may say, "Oh, that's some left wing tendencies here and there," like, but but still, what many would take to call a centrist, if you will, many today would call a centrist. And like Bernard Franklin, is a universalist of sorts. So Bernard Franklin taking taking the more social science route, psychology and neuroscience. And then here you have Tony Clemmer taking 
a more professional business approach none the you know none the, you know no, nonetheless nonetheless utilizing a great degree of social science and psychology as well considering now if we look in now if we look to look to the the, the wisdom for good retreats themselves under experience quote this is on this is on their website quote the goal of our retreat is to shift our moral mindsets in order to pursue the good toward a life of meaning we will explore the moral virtues informed by the world's wisdom traditions in order to stay on a path to living virtuously informed by the world's wisdom tra tra you know tra you know traditions they have what's called a new manual for living. There's a few other texts, one that's featured on the GCU news website. And makes it quite plain that yes, you are studying a multitude of excerpts from quote quote the wisdom literature across the ages, Western and Eastern, ancient to modern. And thus you are bringing that all to together to finalize your perception of reality and what is good except that good is a uh, well highly questionable if not in its way notably perhaps relativistic yet controlled by consensus let me uh let me use this as an example this is a quote during that conference from the chair of online faculty who attended it. She says, some reflected on how they either had Jesus in their life or didn't, and there was no judgment. Which is like, okay, well, I mean, you, sh you should be listening and whatnot, and not, inter not intervene and whatnot, except that's not really what she's saying. Continuing, you, did, you didn't have to have that to reflect on your own moral virtue. They aren't tied to one faith. We all have it in us. And generally, this is true. People can, quote, quote, choose to do good things. But notice what she says. They aren't tied to our faith. Sorry, to one faith. Except according to scripture, that's not the case. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we all have it in us. We all have it in us. A.K. what? Man is good. Man is good. We just need to become gooder, better. Hopefully, shooting for perfection. I don't believe in perfection, but ultimately that's the idea, right? So just like GCU's flourishing, just like the flourishing espoused by Baylor University, Harvard University, King College in New York, as well as, as well as many others that we're going to be looking into soon. For now, let's take a quick pause, turn back to the word, look, look, look with me to the verses 6 through 9 in Proverbs 2. For the Lord giveth wisdom, the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So the word of the Lord is knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Buckler. So he's holding up our pants and it's also providing some protection, especially for our, our you know, our you know more sensitive you know, abdominal area. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the ways of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity and this is equity in the true sense equity in the sense that not everybody deserves but everybody should get in this case treated by you the focus is how you interact with people not what people deserve how people deserve to be treated by everybody else but how you that's how equity in the biblical sense works. It's, it, starts with, it starts with the person going outward, 
and and being just, being true, being of equal weights and scales regardless of what's happening around them. Yea, every good path, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints, just like in Psalm 23, verse 3. And all this, what, and what, regardless of what's happening right, regardless of what, if whoever's doing what. This isn't about, once again, this is fear of the Lord, not the fear of man. This is not kowtowing to our institutions, to our establishments. To our authorities, we give honor to whom honor is due, respect to whom respect is due. But no, no, I no, we're gonna have to disagree with with the chair of on, of the online faculty. We all have it in us. No, that is blasphemy. That is of the devil. Turn our attention over to, turn our attention over to Second Samuel chapter two verses six through ten before we go on to another example of these conferences of these fellowships which bring in faculty and students from colleges and grade schools. So that's GCU, that's that's their conference for their faculty. And also can be available to a number of their graduate students as well if they're if they're pretty close to finishing their studies. Second Samuel chapter two, six through ten. This is this is from the prayer of Hannah. Oh, I'm sorry. First Samuel chapter two. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote two down. I even thought to myself, wait a minute, that's too far ahead. Samuel is towards the beginning of 1st Samuel, not 2nd. My goodness. Alright, 1st Samuel chapter 2, starting verse 6. Listen carefully to this and meditate on it. Not in the Hindu, Buddhist, Eastern mystical sense. Sense of take this to heart. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. There is no one strong enough to overcome the will of God. Rest assured, as Christ reminded us, sure, they can do a number of things to our body, but what can they do to our soul, and thus how can they affect our mind? How can they affect our eternity? The body is part of us, Yes, it is part of what it means to be a human being. But it's not the all in all, my dear listeners. Far from it. Sorry. And last, and last, sorry, and let's finish with verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. He shall give strength unto his king. Ooh. Fun fact, that's ultimately resting in the Messiah, the one who will reign forever and ever. But alongside that, exalt the horn of his anointed, the horn of his anointed. The horn, so what? When we sound the, sound the horn, sound the trumpet, when we call out to the Lord, if not announce the coming the sovereignty, the power, the majesty of the king. He will exalt that. Worldly wisdom exalts men. 
it uh, it praises them it flatters them makes us more than what we truly are who do you fear who do you love my dear listener what treasure do you seek after each day that's something I have to remind myself of constantly too no less no more for I am just a man also in need of, re of uh, redemption now the second example returning back to uh, mentioned before Calvin University a little more insight on the Van Lunen Center which is for executive management in Christian schools Calvin University, remember, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and yes, it is named after John Calvin, although it's not quite Calvinistic in the least, or just like GCU, which is interdenominational, non-denominational, whatever they want to claim themselves, they are quite ecumenical in itself. In fact, they've ceased to protest. Calvin University no longer has any, has any uh, caution around the, the, around the papacy. And mind you, as you've seen so far at St. Mary's University, and you'll see with these upcoming you know, institutions, that the papacy has far from any caution, any separation from the rest of the members of Mystery Babylon, including Eastern occultists. So, when you fellowship with, when you try to learn with, try to learn from, papacy well you're gradually taking in what is what is quote unquote obvious doctrine of demons but anywho quote from the Van Lunen Center you know page the mission of, of Van Lunen Center is to provide world class executive management training for heads of schools based on the historic Christian faith faith I say Christian faith because there's nothing because there's really nothing about faith involved in this but yes so, so yes yeah, so this address so this is a program is a fellowship for the heads of school historic Christian and why do I have a problem with historic Christian faith because when you look more into that what that means is all the additional doctrines and theology, and especially in Calvinist circles, even that include that of the divines, which are seen as high-end, widely accepted theologians and in their interpretations of Scripture. And I have no place for that. I don't really care much for really care much for, uh, as you probably already know, but I'll remind you for those who don't, and also new for you who don't know. I don't really bother much with commentaries. I don't really care much for them. I can read. Holy Spirit can help me understand. And plus there's also this thing called dictionaries as well as concordances in the Hebrew and Greek. The Lord has has us has us sustained me with that. And yes, by all means, you listen I listen to a to teachers of the word, my may I recommend uh, the video page on YouTube, BitChute, and Odyssey, amongst others, Redeemed KJV. And there's up, and there's plenty of others as well. But please, never use them as your sole understanding of the word of the Lord. For me, they're just a supplementary. They are encouragement. To stay faithful to the word of the Lord, regardless of popular contemporary of institutional consensus. So let's think here. And this has been so there's been an annual annual you know annual ascending leaders program from the Van Luden Center. Once again, it takes in about I think it's like 14 to 20. And really, this is the, this is the common thing for a lot of, for these you know for this fellowship for this uh, program as well as the next program that we're going to look into afterwards. But usually, they take in about 
15 to 20 people. Said it could be faculty, administration, and or students. In this case, we're talking about faculty. We're, we're talking about, oh, sorry, administration, the heads of schools. And this July 2023, there's also the, uh, also, there's also the new ascending leaders program. So now they'll. So now, not, not only will they be providing this program, so what was providing this program to those who are currently heads of school, but also pr pr prospective heads of schools, as well. So we're looking to the fellows program. Whatever I say for the fellows program, which is for the heads of school, will apply to the ascending leaders program. So it's year long. And you do, and there's a summer session at Calvin U University, as well. And that's and that's a, I think that's a three, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, three weeks. But there's a winter session, that's only three days, at Franciscan Renewal Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> My goodness, Scotts, like really. Once again, it's first is Grand Canyon University going to Maryland, and now it's from Calvin University. They're sending, well, actually a multitude of people. In fact, I actually know that there's this this fellowship program has been going on for like quite some time, and these fellow and these te and these and this, these uh, heads of school they come from across the country, as well as a number from Canada and other international schools as well. So. And they've had this for over a decade. So we're talking about it's affected hundreds. Hundreds of of the leaders of schools across mostly and bear I mind you, what's find really interesting is mostly Protestant schools. It's kinda of strange because it's kinda of strange because Calvin University is linked with a lot of Catholic schools and universities. They're associated with them in a number of ways, that work with them in a number of ways, and yet, essentially, all of the fellows program members, participants, have been from Protestant evangelical schools. But, anywho, and what's the overall purpose of the fellows program, as well as the Ascending Leaders program? Its purpose is to is to uh, examine and strengthen leadership from within. Examine and strengthen leadership from within. So we have to look inside of ourselves to find the truth, to, 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 you know, to understand, to discover you know, this wisdom that we all have. As well as just, and, and before we go a little bit more into the nature of the Franciscan Renewal Center, the resources, so the reading that they that they go through, reading and programs that the, that they go through throughout the year, as well as with the Franciscan Re Re Renewal Center, a number of them, the vast majority of them, are not Protestant, Reformed, at, like resources at all. In fact, a number of them are Catholic. A fair number of them are mainstream. Contempor just mainstream, contemporary, to secular. I mean, it's, a number of them are, you know, a number of them are, you know, have have a Protestant evangelical, but not of but not of the Reformed tradition for the most part, or just at all for that matter. Theologians such as Dallas Willard, but he was very ecumenical. In fact. Uh, in fact, he, in fact, he was a, he was, he was a quite the uh, student, student, the uh, student. He was an admirer of the late, of the late, of the, of the late early twentieth century philosopher Edmund uh, Husserl, if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was by far not a believer whatsoever. And I think I'm being facetious and being nitpicky. Well. Just to give you an idea of the nature of Franciscan re, re, you know, Renewal Center. Here are some upcoming events right here in Arizona. In August, there's a 22nd annual 
And this is on their website, by the way, Franciscan Renewal Center. So you can check it on events. The second, 22nd annual LGBTQ Fratelli Tutti Conference. Fratelli Tutti means sisters and brothers all. It's a statement made by Pope Francis. And, and no, they're not encouraging these people to leave behind their life of sodomy and confusion about their sexuality or identity in general. And in October, you have the Dream Great Things Conference, which is part of the global celebration of young people. This is for people ages 12 through 39. And it's focusing on vocation, social justice, and doing good. And yes, mind you, all D-I-E friendly. Diversity, inclusion, and equity. Just so then there's no conf confusion about this. And in November, there's learning prayer and meditation as inspired by Thich Nhat Han, a Buddhist monk, and Thomas Merton, a very ecumenical and confused Roman Catholic priest. Both of whom uh, knew each other, and Thomas Merton admired Han and uh, adopted a considerable amount of his philosophy and practice. And in December, there's a brush with God, which is a part of Indigenous peoples, you know, Indigenous peoples' uh, day or month. I don't remember. So a brush with God, but yes, yeah, and it's brush with God, and it's focusing on meditation and prayer as well as worship, while painting one's own personal version of the Virgin of Guadalupe. So the, which is a, which is a uh, Mexican form of Mary. So yeah, there you go. It's a combination of, uh, so you can only imagine what they're being taught there. It's, I mean, when you're talking about Franciscan monks who embrace sodomy, confusion, apostasy, Eastern mysticism, and just flat out, I you know, idolatry. Turn our attention back over to verses 10 through 15, 10 through 15 of Proverbs chapter two. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. So he speaks from the gut, he speaks from the flesh, he just speaks, quote, quote, his mind, even if, it, even if his mind is deluded. Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the f in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths. So, what's the point of point of all this? What is you know for for this side of heaven, when wisdom entereth into thy heart, so you fear the Lord, you know Him, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul. So. Remember, his rod and his staff, his correction and his guidance comforts you. Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. Who leaves the path of rightness, of rightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Turn our attention over to Joshua chapter 1, 6 through 9. I got the reference right this time. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through six through 9. My dear listeners, my dear brethren, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I know that we face uncertain times and we face an uncertain future, but know this, that the Lord has, not, has yet to change, He will not change, and His power will be with us forever and ever. 
For remember, death has no sting. I've been born again, following him for the last 24 years. And I may very well live. He may tarry, I may, and I may have a longer life. I may live another 24 years. And I want more than the first 24 years to be faithful in the second. Braver, bolder, more courageous, more full of wisdom. More understanding of the reality of things, the nature of things. To be more rooted and established in the way, the truth, and the life. Indeed, life, living, enjoying it. Not in fear of man or what may come. But fearing going against my Lord. For his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Without him, I will fear evil. Without him, I will succumb to the evil way of men. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through, 6 through 9. This is a promise given to Israel before they entered the promised land. But nonetheless, this is a promise to the saints. This is a promise to those who follow the law, follow the will, the word of the Lord. Generation to generation. This applies to us Gentiles as well. Sure, we don't we don't we don't share in the particular promise for for the for the real estate, but we share in the promise of the Spirit being in us. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to, to give them. Remember when Christ comes back, that's when we will rule on this side. Because heaven heaven and earth will surely be coincide be a new heaven and new earth. But until then, we must be con content with our parcels. Because after all, it's not worth much. What we'll get, it will be far better. A new earth. Do you really want, do you want, you know, this old stuff? <laughs> not for time. No, no. It's not, it's not worth the, the struggle. So I will wait for his sovereignty, for his blessing. Verse 7, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Did you hear that? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have, I, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And my life has been a testimony to that. All over California, here in Arizona, and wherever else the Lord leads me. I'd say, now it's your turn, my dear listener, my dear brother in Christ. Let the Lord guide you, comfort you wherever you go. Now, next up is the Lily Fellows Program, which is, uh, which is uh, organized and headquartered at Val Par Paraiso University in Indiana. I didn't really look too much into that because there's plenty of information with the Lily Fellowship Program itself, and this is focusing on high-achieving scholars, so focusing on students and could also involve certain but here's the thing though the conferences is a part of involve students so Lily Fellows program is before it's for students but the conferences it participates with is for once again students faculty and staff of universities so hundreds of people attend these conferences each year along with any other workshops or you know, workshops or meetings got whatever and this is Lily Fellows, Lily Fellows program is just one of many of this nature. So we're talking about, if you're listening carefully, if you're not quite getting it, we're talking about a 
system, a net system, all different kinds of systems, networks, associations, fellowships, and programs, of which are indoctrinating, as in instilling the fundamentals, the rudiments of ecumenicism, of worldly wisdom, in higher education, down to even elementary and secondary schooling. This is what we're dealing with. It's all over the it's all over the country, around different parts of North America and the world at large. My dear listeners, are you discerning what's influencing you? Are we desiring the word of the Lord amidst all of these voices, all of, of these sources of quote unquote so called wisdom? Lily Fellows Program, the twenty twenty three National Conference. Hosts, you know, hosted by Aquinas College in Grand in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is the thirty third annual national conference. And what was this topic? Contemplating, sorry, its theme is contemplating integral ecology for the common good. And it featured three keynote speakers. Were that. Were that a meteorology professor from MIT, a philosophy professor from St. John's University of Queens, New York, and an English professor of Calvin University. It is a fellows program. It is a conference. So don't think this is just a mere business association. No, these are like-minded spiritual and theological philosophical kinsmen. 2022, there was the implicit racial bias, sorry, implicit racial bias and the academy, hosted by Lipscomb University, a private Christian university in Nashville, Tennessee. Implicit racial bias, you already know what the topic is. So, just good old fashioned, you know, the good old fashioned, uh, Racial intersectionality and you know, but you know, and you know, and bias, affirmative action, this, that, and the other. But what's really interesting about Lipscomb U- University is that this year it received over a million dollars in state, and this is on their website, over a million dollars in state funds to train their students to be counselors, and over four million dollars. And I'm, and I'm talking about I'm talking about mental psychological counselors and over four million dollars of federal funds for that as well as for medical staff as well. In short, the world at large is running out of intelligent, sane people with any conscience, and now it's throwing money just like a number of institutions did with Baylor to utilize. The, to utilize that intelligence, utilize, utilize that, that's you know that skill that just that just any sense of care to help continue their projects, their their agendas. Because after all, do you think they could? We got to preach the preach the gospel and uplift people, our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, while we do while we do all this. Of course not. Got to live by their rules. That's the law of the common good. For that common good is not Lord God. In 2021, the theme was Science, Faith, and the Common Good, hosted by Boston College, which is Jesuit. And we have a professor in physics and astronomy of University of Delaware, representative, a VP and associate chief of Harvard University and Boston Medical Center, as well as professor in Christian philosophy of Fuller Seminary. That year, there was also a new initiative in majors in Global Public Health and the Common Good and Human-Centered Engineering. So, new majors initiatives at Boston College are Global Public Health and the Common Good and Human-Centered en- Engineering. 2020 the theme was education 
and the Common Good, hosted at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. So, the representatives come from John Hopkins University, Boston College, USC, so you, and Samford University, which is a Christian university, quote unquote Christian university, and it, and it's and it's, a, and, it's a, and it's appealing to the signs of the times, but not according to scripture, but according to the Catholic doctrine. So not the biblical signs of the times, but the Catholic Church's interpretation of the signs of of the times. Hence the need for education and the common good. That's 2020. Starting to notice a pattern here, a sequence of events. And in 2019, you have character of the university hosted by Baylor University, in which in which a major consideration was question was how do we make room for human flourishing for the purposes of 21st century higher education? And lastly. 2018, robust and, and receptive ecumenism. Let me say that again, robust and receptive ecumenism. Hosted at Hope College, which is likewise a quote, unquote Christian you, 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 uh, you, you, university. And notice something here. You have Westmont College of California, Christian, Gardner Webb U University, I believe in North Carolina, quote unquote Christian, and Sacred Heart of uh, Sacred Heart Seminary, Catholic. And then that, now, now they claim that this is not shooting for the lower lower common denominator, but quote, in order for authentic conversation to take place, people must honestly express deeply held views they hold as true. And of course, the, which entails, we're not going to correct them, we're not going to, not, we're not going to exhort them, we're not going to, you know, provide any teaching whatsoever, any discipleship whatsoever. Why? Because what's all said and done, Notice, 2018, you have essentially, quote, unquote, all Christian schools, but then in the current year, you have a motley crew of Protestant Evangelical, Roman Catholic, and secular. And these are those who we are supposed to have, be in friendship with, be in fellowship, to find a common vision for the world. And this is a part of the higher ranks of higher education, and this is what's being taught to countless hundreds across all these fellowships and programs and conference, countless hundreds of administrators and educators at the, at the college and grade school level in this country alone. Let's turn our attention over to verses 16 through 22. Proverbs 1. Oy. We're going to wrap this up pretty soon. So at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16 through 22. So, to deliver thee from the strange woman. Strange woman being, well, the seductive, alluring, used to follow the Lord, but decided, eh, he's not giving me what I want, so I'm going to just whore myself out and do as I please, believe in what I want. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger, and remember, strange woman is referring to not literal woman, it could, but more so a mindset, a spirit. Not like, not like a familiar and evil spirit, but, you know, it's, it's a state of mind. It's, it's what you desire, what you want, what you feel like you need day to day. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, 
and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. This is a, this is a seductive, richly embroidered clad, offers great gifts and promises. This isn't some, this is, this is some, you know, dingy, you know, dingy, you know, trashy, you know, thought of tramp. This is, this is the most desired thing you've ever seen. And this is what the Lord says to beware of. Verse 21, 22, for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. And those perfected justified in his name, in this case by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Let's conclude in Revelation chapter 7. Before we close, before we close, Revelation chapter 7. For right now, the woman, the strange woman, is doing what she can to win people over in large numbers. And she is so convincing. She, it was, it's only by grace that she does not deceive the elect. Who are the elect? I don't know. The Lord knows. So leave it at that. No Calvinist. Not here to figure that out. I'm only here to edify, to exhort, to encourage you in the ways of the Lord. Revelation chapter 7. 1 through 6. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, I got this wrong again. <laughs> I'm terrible. Goodness sakes. What is wrong with me today? Here we are, 17. I forgot the one. Revelation 17. I knew it was too soon, and I just didn't want to second guess myself. My goodness. Sorry for the wasting of your last 30 seconds. Still very helpful, though, right? Just in case you haven't read chapter, you know, chapter 7 in a while. 17, 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, which is many people, different kinds of diverse people, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, and having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So even John the Baptist can't, has a hard time resisting this woman. Who's, that's the thing, that's the thing about deception, people. That's the thing, thing about the false light. It's the thing about darkness. It's so alluring. We know it can kill us. We know it doesn't love us. We know it will discard us whenever it sees fit for any reason, yet we just gotta have it. Who do you love? Who do you fear? Do you desire? Do you cry for the wisdom of the Lord? And I saw a woman drunken with blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. For, for, for in due time, this strange woman, this whore, when she gets enough 
control over the political and economic political and economic institutions and powers of men she will show her true colors she will show her true face of horror she will reveal her bloodlust and be unashamed about it when shall this happen well it's happened actually time and time again but there'll be a final time when shall it be during my lifetime our lifetime maybe but just so you know a strange woman may garner power again and she may do it for quite some time before our lord's re return but never fear verse 12 through 18 and then we'll close and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the, where the horse is, are peoples and multitudes and nations and, and tongues. Don't go with the majority. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Yeah, that's the thing. You've, you're on her side. You're one of her followers. Time comes. The time, if the time does come, you don't want to be caught in the crossfire, because, because then the powers of government and money will come crashing down upon you in beastly animalistic fury. For God has put in their hearts to to fulfill His will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest in the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So don't worry, the Lord is in control. Their power is whatever he sets, he sets you know, boundaries on. And those who are chosen, those who are true, those who are faithful, we will fare well. As for the strange woman, the whore, and as for the beast, devil incarnate well such is an inglorious fiery forever and for us indeed comfort comfort joy ah yes to know the Lord for who he truly is and for us in a perfected, justified form, reigning alongside him on his right hand. Under him, though, keep that in mind. Forever and forevermore. But in the meantime, he restores my soul. He leads me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer. Whether it be 24 more, more days or 24 more years plus. The Lord God be with you, my, my dear brethren. Choose his wisdom and not the wisdom of men. Signing out.